going to be talking with Elena Hotchkiss and finding out a little bit more about her journey. Elena, thanks for coming. Thanks for being with us. No, thank you for having me, Kathy. Yeah. We are um, so excited to hear about how you've come to St. Joseph and gotten so involved with everything. But I wanted to start actually before that um, and talk about your early memories of coming to the faith. I mean, what were some of the first influences uh, in your life? Well, um, I was a cradle Catholic. So um, baptized when I was very little, and I went to Catholic grade school, mm -hmm. and, um, high school. So my family was very into the church and um, and teaching. And you know, back then we were so much. We were more reverent, I think. We understood, or at least our grandparents and our parents taught us. You will go to 9 o'clock Mass, because that's the children's Mass. You will be seated with the nuns, and um, pay attention. So, so you um, were instructed yeah, I was, that way. And, and we joined the junior sodality, and knew to go get our holy water when it ran out, and um, mm -hmm. knew the priest. It was, it was a, the neighborhood, you know, you were in the neighborhood, and and um, it was just, uh, it, was, it was a good bringing up. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I wish that I was like that with my children. Mm. Because you tend to get away when life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, your, your story is not uncommon in that regard because there are a lot of people who uh, reflect back on a time when things were not as complicated, uh, maybe there were not so many distractions, you know, so, you know, I, I, I hear that you're feeling bad that you didn't do X, Y, and Z, but, you know, times have changed too. So I want to go back to your, your phrase there, your term, reverent. You said we were more reverent then. Um, are you saying we as a family, we and... We as a body of children, of, you know, my peers growing up. I mean, to us, the sacraments was, it was such a blessing to get to the next step in your faith. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so baptism, of course, I don't remember, but Holy Communion, oh, that was such a celebration. And then confirmation, you became a soldier of Christ. And um, I can remember my confirmation because it was on my birthday. Oh, wow. And it just so happened, I lived in D.C., and we had this horrendous snowstorm that day and we had to walk to church and get through I, I bet you we must have had like three three feet of snow that day which you never get in DC but um, but it was just something that it was so exciting to mm -hmm. make your uh, to for the sacraments mm -hmm. so it, it really became um, a milestone that everybody recognized mm -hmm. and that everybody just assumed was the next thing. And that is very different for a lot of people now. Not not everyone, but I can imagine in a Catholic um, family, get growing up in a Catholic family, um, that you had a lot of that information, knowledge, not in just your family, but in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how did you proceed from then? I mean, did you ever have a time when you rebelled or went through challenges to your faith? Well, I think when. You know, raising a family, having young ones, you didn't go to church as much as, and and also living in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So church wasn't just a walk away. Oh, and that's a big so you, we, you know, we weren't as strict as far as Sunday mass. Mm -hmm. Did take the kids to CCD because they did go to public school, and um, mm -hmm. I, I just felt like also. The church kind of got away from some of the sacred reference ways of teaching the sacraments to our kids. Mm -hmm. So I, I was thrilled because um, my children went to a holy family at the time. And just knowing that the boys, they had to have a stole that they made. And my oldest took Matthew as his confirmation name. and 
Christopher, my middle, took Luke, and I went, why did you do that? Why did you take yeah, Luke, those Chris? are interesting Yeah, because they know the apostles, and of course, Chris said, because it was the shortest letter she had to write. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they were just... Uh, on their own, but sure. but he does go to church now, so he's he's a good one. Well, that's <laughs> Luke wonderful. Is following him. <laughs> so um, you're you said they went to CCD, um, but partly you're saying that the church itself has changed in how things are being taught or how things are offered. Well, I'm sure that they're teaching, you know, the basics, but mm -hmm. it's it's just like uh, for. Holy Communion, First Communion. It was so nice to see the procession of the children coming down and I just feel like the ones that just are taking Communion by themselves are not really understanding how important this is mm. that you're taking Christ into you mm -hmm. and He's with you every week, every day. Mm -hmm. um, I just, to me, and you know the family's there and I'm sure they they see it differently, but I just loved it when it was something really special for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so you feel like maybe that's a little bit lost in today's world and culture. Yeah, I guess I like the tradition. I like the presentation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, I I appreciate that because that's you know still foreign to me mm -hmm. because I wasn't raised that way, mm -hmm. and so it's really. It's wonderful, and I, I hear sort of the sadness about the changes. You know, I think traditions are really wonderful, but they sometimes go away, and oh, it, they it have. makes us makes us a little yeah. bit sad. So, and um, how did you get to St. Joseph's? You were going somewhere else, and then how did you well, come here? We moved out to Eldersburg, and Holy Family is just in Randallstown, which is what's about six miles away. So, when we moved here to St. Joe's. Well, to this parish, um, that's how I got here. But I really did not get involved except for, well, I would go to Mass, and actually I never changed from Holy Family to St. Joe's until later. My granddaughter was um, at Bible school here, and she got sick, and of course they couldn't get the parents, so they said, call my grandmother. And, and Hannah said, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they said, well, we, your grandmother doesn't belong here. And says, oh, yes, she does. She <laughs> comes every Sunday. She's here. And she was out of it. So I just, uh, so then I said, you know, I better check to see if I did change from Holy Family to St. Joe's. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So your granddaughter got you here? She certainly Officially, did. She got anyway. me signed Officially. up. <laughs> So you've been involved, it sounds like, um, of, of late and in lots of different things. What are some of the ministries you're involved in? Well, um, when I retired, I didn't know anybody in the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe two people, and I def definitely had my husband. But um, I just felt that I needed something because I... I worked in Virginia, so that's where my friends work. Wow. So I had seen in the bulletin they needed a sacristan to help. And um, Kathy Cavey, who uh, was a Catholic daughter, uh, asked me, would you like to join the Catholic Daughters? And I said, I've never heard of the Catholic Daughters. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of Sodality, but not Catholic Daughters. So um, St. Joe's was gracious enough to accept me as a sacristan. And um, and then I went to the Catholic daughter meeting, and here I am. Yeah, yeah. And it just I tend to join where I'm needed. Hmm. So um, uh, one of the Catholic daughters said, um, "Will you come and join me for Saint Vincent de Paul?" And so she's left that ministry, but I'm still there. And then it um, morphed into Carroll County Food Sunday, and then Feed My Sheep, and where I'm needed. Yeah, and it's I find that the, now when I come to church or leave church, a number of people just come up and we speak, and it's so nice to know so many mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wonderful, caring people. Well, it sounds like that 
community, this community has really meant a lot, especially since retirement. Um, how would you encourage other people in terms of getting involved? Younger family, uh, with families and all of that, I mean, what, what would be the benefit for them? Would it be the same thing, or how would you encourage uh, them? Well, I feel that St. Joe's is bringing in the younger community, and I mean, just to go to Mass and see the parents bring their small children to church. It's, uh, I just, I don't know how they can get them dressed in time <laughs> to get there. And I mean, they'll go to 8 o'clock mass too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, so I do feel like that we're bringing in the, the younger mm -hmm. crowd. Mm -hmm. But if people would just take a leap of faith and open their hearts and just say hello, because there are so many older um, parishioners that have come up to me and said, could you just pray for me because I'm going for an operation? And it's just, wow. it's heartwarming to know that they will come to you and, you know, reach out and know that you're there to help them. So I think, I think we're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sounds like if people were to get involved and, you know, do some of the ministries, they'll, they'll meet yeah. more people. And I think what I'm hearing you say is that they're going to be meeting the needs of everyone. And their uh, self. And their selves, that's good, mm -hmm. uh, by being involved mm -hmm. and, and being available to people mm -hmm. for, for things like prayer. I mean, yeah. that's a wonderful example. Yeah. Um, several years ago, many years ago, my um, nephew um, became a quadriplegic. And that's what truly got me to understand what the Eucharist meant. Oh. That brought me to, to church. And I knew just receiving the sacrament would help him. Hmm. And um, he's passed since, but it was a very tough time for my family. Mm -hmm. But it brought me closer to this church and brought me closer to, to my faith. Mm -hmm. so. It, it's often the case that when tragedy strikes, um, difficulties come, that we draw strength um, from Jesus. And when we aren't going to church developing that relationship, we don't have that strength. Well, it, it kept me here. It yeah. did. It wasn't something that I gave up on. It just brought me closer. And when people have issues or problems, and we all... You know, we all have a hard time at times. I know that just me being here, saying a prayer, taking the Eucharist is, it, to me, it helps mm -hmm. everyone, mm -hmm. especially myself. Mm -hmm. Wow, what a blessing you are to the people <laughs> here and, you know, to the people watching your interview. Uh, you can see Jesus in you, and I appreciate exactly. you sharing your story with us. Yes. Well, thank you. I never felt I was holy enough to become a sacristan. Uh, and because I just felt I didn't understand fully. But the only thing I can say is just reach out, just try, just come. You know, even if it's just for one day, just try. Mm -hmm. And you'll you definitely understand the grace that you bring. And with that, we'll say thank you, and uh, we'll stay tuned for the next journey. It might be yours. Thank you.